Did you know that your emotions come from your brain? There's no such thing as a bad emotion. Every emotion, like happy, sad, angry, or anxious, has an important role to play. Everyone has emotions, kids, teenagers, and adults. Emotions can help us work out how to respond or behave in different environments and situations. Sometimes our emotions can get really big. They can start to bubble up and up until they come out quickly in ways that are not very kind or helpful to ourselves and others. We might feel so frustrated or angry that we react by screaming at someone, even though it could get us into trouble or hurt their feelings. We may feel so overwhelmed with how hard our homework is that we might throw it away or run into our room crying. By understanding how our brains work, we can begin to understand our emotions. Then we can learn ways to help calm down big emotions and express them in more helpful and positive ways. The brain can be tough to understand, so let's break it down into three main parts that help guide our emotions. The first part of our brain is our smart brain, also known as our frontal lobe. Our smart brain helps us with things like reading, writing, solving problems, thinking clearly, and even with how we communicate. The second part of our brain is our emotional brain. The emotional brain is in charge of the storing and sorting of emotions and memories. The third part of our brain is the survival brain, also known as our brain stem. This part of the brain is responsible for our body's basic functions. Things like our breathing, heart rate, movement, sleep and more. It can help our bodies respond quickly in dangerous situations to help keep us safe. But when we feel really strong emotions, our smart brain can go temporarily offline. This is so our emotional brain can focus on sending messages to our survival brain to respond as quickly as it can to help keep us safe. This can be really helpful for keeping us safe when we're in danger, like if we came across a bear and our body needed to respond quickly without having time for the smart brain to think it through. But our brain can't always tell the difference between danger and when we're just feeling really big emotions like stress. So while the smart brain turning off can be really helpful in certain situations, like needing to run away quickly from a bear or an angry dog, it wouldn't be so helpful in times when we have big emotions. In those times, we need our smart brain to help us think clearly, like when we have a test coming up or have to give a speech. A big part of being able to manage our emotions is learning how to notice when our smart brain is about to switch off and finding out what we can do to keep the smart brain switched on. Our brain has evolved to help us stay safe from danger. When our brain is really stressed and thinks we're in danger, it tries to keep us safe by triggering a response called fight, flight, freeze. This is our brain's natural reaction to danger. For example, if you came across a bear and felt in danger, your smart brain will go temporarily offline and your emotional and survival brains will take charge. This is because if a bear was about to attack you, you wouldn't need to know what kind of bear it is. Your body just needs to respond quickly to keep you safe. You might try to attack the bear. That's a fight response. You might try to run away and hide from the bear. That's flight. Or you might stay perfectly still and try not to move and hope the bear doesn't see you. That's freeze. We live in a world that's full of stress. So our brain can't always tell the difference between day-to-day -day stress and stress because we're in danger. Stuff like homework, fighting with friends, or public speaking can still trigger our fight, flight, freeze response. Even if we're not in any physical danger. Like if you're feeling stressed because of a speech you have to do at school, you might feel like yelling or screaming. That's your fight response. 
you might want to run off stage and hide. That's your flight response. Or you might freeze in place and not be able to get the words out. That's your freeze response. The good news is that there are lots of things we can do to help calm these big feelings down and keep the smart brain switched on. Tip one. If you can learn how to calm down your body, this can help to calm down your survival brain. You can do this by doing physical things like taking deep breaths, going for a run or having a shower. Tip two. Calming down your thoughts can help calm down your emotional brain. You can do things like meditation, mindfulness, or activities that use your five senses. Tip three, keep your smart brain switched on. Do things your smart brain is good at, like communicating with a trusted adult, talking to a counselor, reading a book, or writing your thoughts down. Calming yourself down takes practice. So to get really good at managing those big emotions, you have to keep practicing.